This I say, therefore, and testify in the law that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give him that needs. You may have your seats. So we have been talking about walking to please the Lord. Walking worthy in order to please the Lord like Enoch walked uh, Enoch walked until he was no more, and the testimony that he achieved, the commendation that he achieved, is that he pleased God. So walking with God talks about the practical part that we need to take uh, in our spaces, in our environments, Pleasing the Lord deals with our motive, our hearts in general. So Christianity is not complete until we leave out the gospel. And you can see that there is a very consistent pattern in Paul's uh, epistles. He begins with doctrine. He calls people to doctrine and he gives an elaborate doctrine. Then after on, he calls people to be able to now live out that doctrine. And that's Christianity. That's how we tell the narrative of God's redemptive story. So if your Christianity is not expressed, if it is not lived out, if that word has not become flesh, if it is not lived out, then you are telling another story which is not the story of the Bible, which is not the redemptive narrative. The way we tell that story is by living out, is by expressing the life of Jesus. And God's redemption is all-encompassing so that in any environment he sends us to, he wants us to express his redeeming love. He wants us to tell his story. And we began by saying that the way, the place to begin is to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where discipleship begins. When you are with him. When you are with him. Because when we are with him, we become like him. And when we become like him, it becomes easy to tell that story. When we become like Jesus, it becomes convincing. It's a story that can never be avoided. You can tell a tree by the fruit they bear. So fruit is a part that you can never ignore. And we saw that to begin that is to be with Jesus so that we be like Jesus. We be with Jesus, we be like Jesus, and we do what Jesus did as he sends us out. Yesterday, we talked about 
another environment where that story is expressed, and that is in our families. And when we live right, when we tell the story of Jesus therein, then we become uh, faithful stewards. Today, I want us to briefly talk about one of those areas that uh, Paul also recognizes where we need to express his gospel, and that is our vocational environment, our workplace. That might mean where you do work, the places he has appointed you to work. Acts chapter 17, scripture says that God has set boundaries where we need to dwell. Where you live, God is aware of where you do live. Because he says that he's the one who has set boundaries even where your dwelling place. So even where you do live, whether it's by choice or by design, because I know we all choose where we want to live. We all choose where we want to work. But scripture says that he's the one who has set boundaries where we do live. So that might mean that he's also aware of your vocational space, of that environment. He's aware. He's set it up for you. And he wants us to approach the way we work with a renewed attitude, with a transformed mind. And that's how we tell the story. So Paul here tells us, he begins by telling us, verse 28, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need, that are in need. How do we tell that story in our workplace? By approaching it with a renewed mind. Because he calls us, to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Because the way we have grown up in our spaces, we have had a different attitude. Based on your orientation, the places you grew up, you are told that you know you need to go to school after you go to school, uh, look for a job. When you get a job, stick to it. You know, cling to it so that you don't let it go by approving your excellence. Proving and working very hard to prove that you know you deserve it. So after that, you know you will be happy. That is the story we have lived. We've grown up uh, telling so that we work ambitiously. Because we want to gratify ourselves for self-gratification. And you are aware how competitive sometimes it can get. It can actually get very competitive and dirty. Depending with the environment you are in. So that uh, the way it turns out, it turns out ugly so that you don't really tell the story of the gospel. But how does the Lord want us to approach it? Paul says, let him that steal, steal no more. And theologians agree that in this environment, in Ephesus at this time, there are those who had lost their jobs. And so it was so justifiable. If you had a family that was in need, it was justifiable to steal. There are also some shopkeepers who are depriving, you know, their workers of their right by paying a little uh, wage that could not sustain them. So he says, stealing should not be an excuse, but work with your hands. Go into labor. Go to work so that the name of the Lord is not ashamed. So you see, discipleship does not just happen in church. It does not just happen in that place.
place you have designated as a spiritual space. Paul wants us to recognize that discipleship also happens in your vocational space, in your workspace. Therein, discipleship happens. So that let him that steal, he who is a thief, let him that steal, steal no more that he may be able to work with his hands. It is redefined for you. In other place, like 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, Paul says that make it your ambition, make it your high goal to live a quiet life, working with your own hands. You know, living a peaceable and a quiet life, working with your own hands so that you may be able to earn the respect of the outsiders so that the gospel of the Lord will not be ashamed. I mean, I thought for me to preach is just to verbalize like we are doing it here. I thought the narrative of God's redemption plan was only told in the mouth of the priest. But here, the boundaries have been extended. The lines and the tents have been broken so that it reaches out to you in your workplace. That that is a tool you can use to spread God's narrative. That work in such a way that you earn the respect of the outsiders with integrity, with purity of art, and go beyond that. Go beyond that so that it's not just my own gratification, so that I am me and my people are happy and we get the goals we are desiring, but that we may also be able to go ahead and provide for those who are in need, right there, work has been redefined for you so that you're not just creative, you are creative in your work, but that creativity does not stop there. You grow in compassion so that others are included in that vision and ambition, in that goal. Because compassion is simply to be able to think about relationship and other people. That you do not stop there. You go ahead and be able to see your work as a calling rather than something you use to fulfill your only selfish gratification, to gratify yourself. The coming of Jesus Christ, the sending forth of Christ Jesus is actually the highest expression of God's creativity on how work should be done. Because he says, when Christ come, he who is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who deserves to be served, now becomes an example of servant leadership by giving himself as a servant. And he says, he tells us, that this is how I need you to do it. That enter your workspace as one who has authority, who is a co-worker with the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that has been invited to work with the Lord to bring forth his create, creative work into the world, do that with authority, but do it, the way to do it, do it as a servant, and not as one who is up there. That is how work has been redefined for us, and that's how we tell a story. That's how we live a life that is worthy in our vocational space. So why can't we trust the Lord? I know the way we have approached it 
is by the definition we have found in the culture. But how about approaching it the way the Lord has defined it for us in the Bible? Why can't we approach it? I call you to get a renewed mind through the freshness of his word. Let us approach it with a new attitude, knowing that the Lord is with us and he wants to use that space to glorify his name above any other desire that he wants to bring forth to you. Beside that, he wants his name to be glorified and he wants his narrative to be told. So I invite you to pray with me that we will be such that spread the little light that is put in us.